Hello Geometry students, I appreciate you finding time to get your notes taken care of. Today we're going to take a little bit deeper look into some of the formulas that we were messing with last time. So the title for today is More Advanced Area Problems. It's not more advanced shapes, just a little bit more advanced skill that's going to be required to work our area equations. Our objective for the day is going to be to solve for missing pieces of information in order to find areas of triangles and quadrilaterals. Please copy down your objective. As always, anytime you need more time to get something copied down, press pause and then hit play when you're ready to move on. Okay, now the last time, or the only lesson that we've had so far, we were looking at the very basics uh, formulas for quadrilaterals and triangles. We were pretty, uh, pretty fortunate on most of the problems that we worked, both in the notes and on our assignments, because all of the information that we needed for the, uh, to plug into the formulas was pretty much already provided for us. But you can bet, okay, this is not, uh, the, not junior high. We're not just plugging numbers into formulas. We're in high school. They are going to make us solve for some missing pieces of information before we are able to plug into those formulas. Okay, so let's take a look at a few examples of some uh, shapes that are missing information that would be needed in order to uh, solve those area equations. Okay. So here's an example. Find the area of the following rectangle. Okay, copy down the diagram. As always, the first step is going to be you better identify the, the kind of shape that you have, and obviously the problem identified it as a rectangle. That's good. Okay, so we know we have a rectangle. So the question that we really need to answer is uh, let's find the area of the rectangle. Well, what is the formula for the area of a rectangle? Okay, a rectangle is a type of parallelogram, and the formula for uh, finding the area of a parallelogram is base times height. So let's look into the diagram and see if we have the necessary information uh, for base and height. Now, of course, as always, base and height are going to be perpendicular to each other in the diagram. Okay, well, we know we have a rectangle, and one of the properties of a rectangle we know is that it is equiangular. We have all right angles inside the interior of our triangle, our, our rectangle, pardon me. Okay, so base and height should be the two opposing sides of the rectangle. Okay, well, we can see that uh, one of those sides is 12, and the other side is unknown. We'd kind of like to know what is going on with this particular location. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to figure out a strategy. How can we come up with the, uh, the value x that I marked in the picture? Okay. Well, probably the key to it is going to be there is a right triangle. Okay, right triangle in there. We know two sides of the right triangle. We do not know the third. So can we find the third? Absolutely we can. Pythagorean theorem will allow that. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The two legs of our triangle are 12 and x, and the hypotenuse is 13. Okay, so if we follow this equation through to its completion, let's see if we can find a value for x. Well, 12 times 12 is 144. x squared is still x squared, and 13 squared is 169. Okay, so if we subtract 144 to the other side of the problem, that will give us x squared equals 25. And if we take the square root of both sides, we are going to find out that x is 5. Okay, so there is our missing side length of our rectangle, and that is the only thing that was stopping us from being able to finish the problem. We did not know uh, what was going on with those perpendicular sides. Now we do. Area is 60, and the units of measure were yards. Okay, area is a second dimensional measurement, so square yards, 60 square yards. Not difficult, but definitely a two-step problem. You have to solve one thing before you can solve for the next thing. All right, let's take a look at another quadrilateral here. Find the area of the following parallelogram. 
Well, again, the first question would be to correctly identify the shape. Obviously, they called it a parallelogram, so we don't have to do any thinking on that. Okay, so how do you find the area of a parallelogram? Well, we have a formula. Same formula as last time. The area of a parallelogram is found by multiplying its base times its height. Okay, so let's see if we can find the base and the height information in the picture here. Okay. Now remember, base and height in a geometric figure, they are going to be perpendicular to each other. Okay, well, we can see we have a perpendicular situation going on inside of the diagram, but we do not know uh, that measurement. Okay, so let's see if we can't plug in some information into the formula here. Area equals base times height. Now they called it a parallelogram, okay, so that means both sets of opposite sides would be parallel. So don't be fooled by the 7 that is sitting there on that side length. The entire length of that side must be 10 millimeters, just like the opposite side length. So that means this little guy right in there is 3 millimeters. Okay, so if we are looking at building a right triangle, possibly right here, we would know two sides of our right triangle, three and five. We do not know the third set aside or the third side length. So once again, looks like a job for Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. This time we know a leg of three. We have an unknown height inside of our parallelogram, and our hypotenuse is five. Okay. Well, this is simple. Actually, this one we should know by heart by now. This one is a Pythagorean triple. Our height is 4. This is the most basic Pythagorean triple uh, triangle that we have. It is the 3, 4, 5 right triangle. Now that's pretty much the only piece of information that was missing from us, uh, stopping us from being able to solve our area, our base and our height, the two guys that are perpendicular to each other. We have a length of 10. We have a length of 4. 10 times 4 is 40. The units of measure were millimeter. Area is always second dimension, so it's 40 square millimeters. Moving on. Okay, now one of the things you're going to see is that these problems can get fairly creative with the type of information that is missing and the different methods that they may have for getting you to find the missing pieces of information. Okay, so find the area of the missing triangle. It's a fairly clever problem the way that it's set up because our area formula says area equals one-half times the base times the height. Okay, area of a triangle. However, when you look at the triangle, you can see that neither the base nor the height are provided for you. And if you were to think along the lines of Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, you are missing both of the legs, you have only the hypotenuse, and you're not allowed to have two pieces of missing information inside of Pythagorean theorem. So Pythagorean theorem will not work. Okay. However, uh, what other rules do we have at our disposal when we are talking about right triangles? Now, it's been a while since we talked about it, but you have your trig functions. So SOHCAHTOA is always at our disposal if we are talking about right triangles. All we need is an acute angle to work from, and we can figure out anything that we would like to know. Okay, so we're going to set up a couple of problems here. I'm going to label our missing sides that we need here, our base and our height. I'm just going to call them X and Y for the time being. And let's see if we can't set up an equation that would find X. Okay, now obviously we have a theta angle measurement, 25 degrees right there. X is positioned directly beside the 25 degree theta measurement. Okay, so what type of a uh, side do we call that? Okay, when it's directly to the side like that, that is adjacent. Okay, so we are in need of the adjacent side to angle 25 degrees. Okay. And the information that we do have, okay, we do have the hypotenuse. Okay, so we have hypotenuse. So which of the three trig functions, and remember this is a subdivided into three pieces, which of the three trig functions would use uh, adjacent and hypotenuse at the same time? That's going to be 
cosine. Cosine is going to use those uh, adjacent and hypotenuse at the same time to solve our problem. So we're going to go cosine of theta, which is 25 degrees, equals the adjacent side, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 7. Okay. Now we just need to isolate x. Okay. Right now x is being divided by seventh, uh, 7, so uh, technically we have a seventh of an x. We don't want a seventh of an x, we want the entire x. To get that 7 out of the denominator, it's, multi it's being divided down there so we can multiply it out. Okay, that'll take care of the 7 in the denominator, but of course whatever you do to one side you also must do to the other. Okay, now we would take 7 cosine 25 degrees, we would take that to our calculator. Remember that your calculator must be in degree mode anytime you are using the trigonometric functions to solve for angles. Okay, and when you run this little calculation, 7 cosine 25, what we end up with is an x value in the ballpark of 6.34. Okay, so I'm going to take 6.34 and I'm going to add it back to our diagram up here. Okay. Well, now you know two sides of a right triangle, so technically we could go to Pythagorean theorem here if we wanted to. However, if we just made a mistake with this 6.34, we really wouldn't want this uh, value of x to cause us additional problems. Okay, so I would vote for not putting 6.34 into the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, because it might not be a correct value, and on top of that, we had to round it off in order to get to 6.34. So there's a lot of decimal points that used to be part of x that I have now rounded off. So I really don't want to use 6.34 to help find any other problems. Okay, but let's see if we can't just do this process again and figure out what is going on for y. Okay, so now this time... we are looking for y. Okay, now what type of a side length is y called in the trigonometric world? y is an opposite side. Okay, so we're looking for opposite. Okay, and we still know for a fact that the hypotenuse is 7. Okay, so there are the pieces of information that we have. Which trig function is going to talk to us about opposite and hypotenuse at the same time? Obviously, that was going to be sine. Sine is going to do that. Okay, so the function says sine of your theta, which is 25 degrees, should equal the opposite, which is y, over the hypotenuse, which is 7. Well, just like the last problem, we have a seventh of a y. We don't want a seventh of it. We want the entire y. So we're going to multiply that 7 out of the denominator. That will give us y equals, and we will take 7 sine 25, we will take it to our calculator, and we're going to get a number in the ballpark of 2.96. Okay, so there's our y value, 2.96. Okay, and now if you look back at the area formula, hopefully you can see that we are now in the clear. We could not find the area to begin with because we did not know the base and the height. Both of them were unknown, but we have discovered those values now. We think there are 6.34 and 2.96. So again, we've got a lot of decimal points going on here, so we would definitely be in the calculator. Okay, 0.5, one half, times 6.34, times 2.96 is going to give us an area in the ballpark of 9.38. The units of measure were feet. Area is always squared. So we're just short of 9.4 square feet. Now again, these problems can get fairly complex, okay? They can get uh, pretty much as complicated as the imagination of the person that's putting them together, okay? So we're going to take a look at a different one, then I'm going to give you a couple to work on your own, and that'll be it. So copy this one down. Okay, one more example here that I'm going to work out for you, and then I'm going to turn you loose. Find the area of the following inscribed square. Now, we haven't spent a whole lot of time talking about inscribed things like that, okay? But, again, they're not trying to test us on whether we know inscribed or anything like that. It's simply a square. We need to find the area of a square, okay? So the necessary information, 
Okay, we have two formulas that we could use. We have the area equals side squared. That's the straightforward textbook formula. And we also have the possibility of going, okay, area equals one half times the product of the two diagonals. Now remember, that's the formula that could be used if we uh, have a quadrilateral that has its diagonals perpendicular. Square is one of the polygons that does have perpendicular diagonals, so we can use that diagonal, uh, the diagonal formula if we choose to. Okay. Now, we do not have, obviously, in the square any information about the sides, and we do not have any information about the diagonals. However, okay, uh, we do have a circle, and we have some information about it. Okay, so let's see if we can uh, use that information from the circle and see if what we can figure out. Now, the information that we are provided from the uh, circle deals with the circumference. Okay, now it's not very helpful to be working with a circle when we're trying to find the area of a square, but again, we're just trying to get the circle to give us a clue of something that's going on with the square. Okay, so circumference, what do you know about circumference? Obviously, it is the distance all the way around the circle, okay, but that's not particularly helpful, okay? We're trying to find a measurement, okay? So how do you find the measurement of circumference? Well, circumference is the result of the formula 2 pi r, okay? So if circumference is 2 pi r, okay, then what we can do is we can take 2 pi r and we can plug it in in place of circumference, 2 pi pi r, which is circumference, results in 10 pi, like this problem said. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have here. Now we have pi on both sides of the equation, so if we were to divide the whole thing by pi, those guys are going to cross out, and you're left with 2r equals 10. Hey, look, we can find the radius really very easily. If we divide both sides by 2, then we just figured out that the radius of our circle is 5. Okay, that's great to know. The radius of the circle is 5. Does that help us with either of our formulas? Okay. Actually, it does. Okay, the diagonal formula down here would like to know the length of the overall diagonals. We just figured out that the radius was 5. Well, the radius going the other direction is 5 also, and the radius coming this direction, 5. Radius there, 5. I do believe we know what's going on with the diagonals. So we would not particularly want this formula, if I can get it out of the way. However, this formula looks pretty good. Okay, For area equals 1 half. The length of the diagonals are 10 each. Okay, so we have 1 half uh, times 10 times 10. Well, 10 times 10 is 100, and half of that is 50. And we did not have any units of measure to work off of, so we will simply say that the 50 has some square units attached to it, and there they are. Okay, the next two problems I'm going to give you are for you to work out. They're not quite as complicated as the inscribed square or the trigonometric triangle or anything like that. Okay, but let's take a look at this one. Find the area of the following rhombus. Okay, copy this di uh, diagram down. Figure out what formula is needed. Solve for any missing information and then find your area. Press pause if you need more time to copy it down. I'm about to change to the next example. And the final example I would like you to give a try to. There's a little bit of a catch to this one, but I'm thinking that you might be able to figure it out. Find the area of the following isosceles trapezoid. Again, copy down the diagram, figure out what formula is needed for an area like that. Figure out if there's any missing information, see if you can solve for it and then come to an answer. If you will, get those two uh, examples, two final examples uh, solved and bring the solutions with you to class. I appreciate you finding time to get your notes taken care of. Now, I'll see you in class. Press pause if you need more time.